Okay, well, hello, this is Mr. Steenstra, for those of you that are watching the video. And uh, I'm going to do a quick demonstration of the check register spreadsheet, which is the assignment for the tech class. Okay, to get the details on this assignment, go to the class website, click on check register spreadsheet, and here are all the steps that you need to follow, and I will be going through these uh, right now. So the first step is to um, create a new spreadsheet. Okay, and we are going to name the spreadsheet uh, again with your full name, and we're going to call it a uh, check register. Okay, and what I like to do is copy this first because you also need to put it in cell A1. Okay, um, the, this uh, um, spreadsheet right here is a real practical example of how you could uh, make a real check register. So if you really, if you had a checking account at the bank, and or actually any account, um, and you're um, depositing and withdrawing money, you want to keep track of how much money you have in the bank, right? And the bank also keeps track, but uh, the reason that you also keep track is so that if the bank makes a mistake or they charge you for something that you shouldn't have been charged for or you are, were unaware of, then when you compare it to your own check register, you find that out. Okay, so um, everybody who has a checking account has their own uh, check register that they keep track of. Now, not, not everybody keeps it up to date faithfully, and that's that can be a problem because they might lose track of their money and end up losing money without knowing it. So th these, that's a, this is a good thing for anybody with a checking account to do. Okay, the second thing you're going to do is put the date in uh, right under the name. And then this, uh, this uh, name here, like we, we had before, um, I like it to be bolded and in a large font. 14 font. Um, that's not in the description, but uh, I'd like you to do that. Okay, and now starting in row, um, label in row 3, hmm, I don't actually have in the assignment to put the date in, so I'm going to take it out, because I like to have a blank line right here. Okay, we're going to put in uh, these column headings, date, description, um, expense, um, and income and balance. Okay, and we're going to bold all of these. Okay, and um, what I like to do here's a here's a little trick for you. Um, if you click this um, little square in the upper left, and then you double click a um, column boundary, it will automatically resize all the columns to fit. Now this first one, it put the whole, it really made it larger than I wanted, so I'm going to change that one back. But these ones got adjusted um, real nicely. Probably description, I'm going to have that one, oops, that's because I had everything selected, so it changed them all. Uh, description probably needs to be a little bit bigger. Okay, so now um, I just give you some data. Um, 1, 1, 13, we're going to do is the opening um, balance. So we put that in your description. Uh, we'll leave uh, expense and income blank, and we'll just say that we have $500 in the bank, okay, uh, when we, at the beginning of our check register balance. Okay, now we're going to enter in a few uh, transactions. Okay, so we're going to um, actually you can make these anything you want. Okay, so you can have some fun with this. You guys can um, act like you won the lottery and put in a big deposit, or um, say you bought a car and have a big withdraw, a big expense. Okay. Um, but you need to have at least five expenses and at least five incomes um, in the spreadsheets. Okay, so um, 
So, and I don't want all the expenses all like right in a row. So let's just say on 1, 2, 13, let's say uh, 1 lottery, and we get income of a million dollars. Okay. Okay, and then on uh, 1, uh, 3, maybe, we say uh, bought a yacht. It, oops, I didn't spell that right. How do you spell yacht? A yacht. No, look, I got it right. Oh, Y-A-C-H-T. C-H-T. Um, what does a yacht cost? Maybe probably a lot of different ranges. We'll say this one costed $300,000. Okay. Um, and I'm going to buy a car. Um, bought, I would say Lamborghini, but I don't know how to spell that, so I'm going to just do Porsche. Porsche. No, no, that's all right. Don't tell me. Uh, okay, so we'll say a Porsche costs 200000 And, um, oh, did I do $2 million? All right. Two. Okay. And now um, we're going to have an income. So I'll do uh, my allowance. And I got uh, $10 for my allowance. And let's say I, okay, keep it quiet, please. Let's say I went out for lunch and that cost uh, $7.23 um, to eat lunch because everything else is rounded. So I'm going to, I'm going to, um, put in some pennies here. Okay, now this isn't the end. You guys need to do this for five um, expenses and five different incomes. So I just did three expenses and two incomes. So you would have to keep on going uh, with this until you have five of each. Um, and okay, so somebody actually said, well, why, why aren't you showing it in dollars? And we need to do that. So what I'm going to do is highlight all the cells that would have to be formatted as dollars, and I'm going to hit format as currency. And now you see like some of them don't fit, so I'm going to fix that. That's a little bit tight. I'll just um, change that. Uh, and just to make this look good, I'm going to merge that. So now things are just looking a little bit nicer. Um, I can even fix my date. Okay. okay, now here here's the main thing when you have a check register is that you need it to calculate the balance. Okay, because um, this is eventually you're going to get a bank statement and you're going to look at your bank statement at the balance, how much money the bank says you have, and you want to compare that to how much money you think you have. Right? And hopefully they match. And we don't want to do this by hand. We want to use the spreadsheet to do the calculation for us. Okay, so this is kind of tricky. Um, what would, let, let's see um, if somebody can help me figure out how to do the calculation. Before you put in a formula, um, the thing that you should do is figure out how the calculation would be done in your head, and then you need to try to translate it into symbols that you type into the spreadsheet. Okay, so um, Michaela, what would the balance be after we won the lottery? Well, let's just see if, uh, what would the balance be. Let's start with that. Okay, $1,500,000. Now, how did you get that amount? Okay, you, so you took the balance and you added the income, okay? 
So we could type that in, but we want to use symbols to do it. So what symbols will I enter in, Drew? Okay, start with equal, that's important. I, I don't actually need a parenthesis yet. I don't need to use sum. Now, it, it would work if I put sum in, um, but sum is really for when you're adding a whole bunch of numbers together. So if I'm just adding two numbers, I can just use the plus sum to add them. Okay. I, actually, I'm going to, you said D5, but I, what I want to do is I want to start with this one just to make it look better. So let's start with E4. Okay. And then what? Plus D5. Okay. And that gives me my balance. <clears throat> and it's correct. But would this same, if I drag this down to the next cell, is it calculating the balance correctly? No. Because I didn't include expenses here. So what I want in this cell is a formula that works even if there's an expense there. So how can I modify the formula so it works for expenses, um, Ethan? All right. Now, you guys, this is confusing. That's exactly right. Very good. I'm going to click on C5 even though there's nothing in it. And so on this particular row, it's not going to do anything. So when I hit enter, I have the exact same number. But the reason we put the C5 in there is when I drag this down and it copies it, it's going to include minusing the expenses. So for this uh, row, it'll work. And let's just do one row and make sure it works. Sure enough, it, it minus, it subtracted the 300,000 for my yacht. Okay, so let's just pull it all the way down here. And we can just do a quick um, sanity check to see it's subtracting and it's adding and subtracting when it's supposed to and we see it's working right. So if we would have entered it in correctly right here, we could have just dragged it down and then very quickly um, did all our calculations. And if you have a really long check register, which eventually people do have, it's really nice then to be able to just pull down those formulas and have them all automatically entered and do all the calculations for you automatically. Okay, so let me just uh, double check here that we're covering everything. Um, okay, in the row after the last transaction, so here's the row after the last, last transaction, I want you to enter the word column, or I mean total, in column B. So what we're going to do is type in total, and I'm going to put a um, colon after it. Okay, and I'm also um, going to take that, and I'm going to bold it. And I'm going to write alignment, uh, align it. So here's the alignment thing, and here's how you write a line. Okay, this is also in the stock market. You would use this to center a line. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just total all my expenses. Okay, and I also want to total all my income um, just to see uh, what my total income is and total uh, expenses were. Okay, so now, uh, Drew, what function might I use to add all these numbers together? Yeah, now since I'm doing, you know, more than just two numbers, here's where I would use the sum. Now I could just highlight the ones with, um, with the numbers in them, but I want my, in general, you want your formulas to be general purpose. So they work even if I would go in and, and add an expense. Maybe I forgot to take out the taxes from that I had to pay for my lottery and I want to put them in expenses later. Then I want everything to still work. So I'm even the ones that have nothing in it, I'm going to go ahead and highlight them. And so it adds up all those numbers. And it, here are my total expenses. Now what's kind of cool is I can grab the fill handle here even and pull it over 
and it's calculating. But you know what? Look what it did. It didn't format it with the um, decimals. Let me fix that. Okay. And so now we have our total expenses and our total income. Um, before um, you actually share this with me, um, I want you to make sure you resize it so things look good. You know, make sure you merge that top line um, so it's it's not all word wrap, so it looks good. And then, just like you did last time, you're going to hit share. You're going to type in my name and leave it as can edit. And then you're just going to and leave that box checked and hit share and save. And now that's don't do that until you're all the way finished with it. That's how you turn in uh, your assignment. All right. So let me end my broadcast.